For Krima Media's Polity, this is Sane Damini. Joining me today is political analyst, Professor Raymond Sadna, to discuss xenophobia. Welcome, Professor. Thank you very much. So, Professor, you speak of xenophobia increasing. What is your evidence of this? I don't have actual statistics, but it is my impression that you you read all the time of people saying they must get out or you hear people saying they must get out. They must just go. We don't want to hear these reasons. Just get them out. Forget about ZEP. Just kick them out. So it's an impression that I have that it is not just some unscrupulous leaders who are calling for them to get out like Gaten. McKenzie or Motswaledi, there's a few others. But now you find ordinary people are starting to believe that they take their jobs. It's not actually true, but the thing is, I get the impression that there is a more widespread xenophobic sentiment in South Africa than there was a few months ago. It's been built up. I think it's partly because of the insecurity after COVID. There's much less jobs, higher unemployment. And instead of the government taking responsibility, they divert it to the migrants. And they say some jobs now can only be occupied by South Africans and things like this, which I think has now seeped down to all levels. Why do you squarely put the blame now on the ruling African National Congress and the state's leadership for the rise of xenophobia? Well, if I'm correct in saying that there are widespread xenophobic sentiments like Operation Dudula, but without Operation Dudula, there's a whole lot of situations where people attack migrant shops and things like that. Some of the people actually who attack those chops are using those chops and uh, they get credit from them and they don't, they actually don't want them to go. But you know, there's a sort of directionless thing. Now, when I was involved in the ANC, the leadership would have given direction and would have said, look, these are our brothers and sisters. Don't attack them. During the struggle, people from these countries used to give us shelter. They used to support our struggle with money, and their states got damaged because the SADF bombed them and killed not just MK, but people in these things. Now, the ANC of today is not giving leadership. It's focusing on money and positions and things like that. You can't imagine the heroic figures of the past having xenophobic sentiments. Chief Lutuli, Oliver Tambo, Walter Sassoulu, Nelson Mandela, Ruth First, Albertina Sassoulu. They would never have said things like that. But that is the way the ANC has decayed has become a decadent organization. It can't give leadership. They themselves are part of the problem. Professor, now you are also placing so little weight on legal arguments like securing borders, having proper documentation, etc. Why is that? Well, I think that it's a fig leaf. You know, when people attack migrants, they don't say, where's your documents? They just attack them. They destroy the stools. They loot. And even the police stand by while this is happening. They don't say only separate those who've got documents from those who don't have documents. It's the legality. When they say Zimbabweans must go, they don't just mean undocumented. They mean everyone. And I think it is a fig leaf. And legalities are not something that is concerning these people who attack the vulnerable. And I think it is um, a pretext for attacking them, but they're attacking them whether or not they're there legally.
And lastly, do you not consider that uh, religious notions of welcoming the stranger need to be modified in our country with its very high rates of unemployment and the pressures on services? Well, the notion of welcoming the stranger, which is religious, uh, a religious phrase um, in a lot of religions, it's part also of... South Africa belongs to all who live in it. It's the same principle in the Freedom Charter and the Constitution. Now, those phrases are used because we believe that we live together and we belong together and we have responsibilities to one another. And if someone is unemployed, you help them. You don't banish them because they're strangers. You help them because... The same people, as I say, who are buying from these migrant shops, one day will loot them because they're caught up in a frenzy and they're hungry. And like in the July insurrection or whatever it's called last year, a lot of people just joined in because they were hungry and they would not normally have done that. Now, I think we must stick by such important ways of relating to one another, like welcoming the stranger and caring for one another. Because if we don't have that, we lose everything on which our freedom was built. That was political analyst Professor Raymond Sadna speaking to Krima Media's polity about xenophobia.